everybody. Welcome to Lunatic Froggy. Today we're going to be talking about Richard Chase, the man on the screen, okay? Richard Chase was known as the Sacramento Vampire. Uh, he was born May 23rd, 1950. We're going to start off talking about his childhood. He it is very well said that his mom and his dad would argue all the time because mom always accused dad of cheating and he wasn't cheating. Um, mom would accuse him of poisoning her even though he wasn't. So they would argue a lot. At the age of five, Mr. Chase here showed signs of Ma the McDonald's triad. And what is the McDonald's tri triad? It's also known as the homicidal triad. It's animal abuse, fire starting, and aggression. In his teen years, it was said that he was a heavy drug user. Mar marijuana and LSD. He was also impotent, which is very important to know this because, well, you'll find out, it was, um, which he learned as a teen. He believed he was a member of the James Yanger gang. Um, if you don't know about them, they are the Jesse James and Cole Younger. So, he believed he was one of them. He would even put his t picture on, like, posters and other pictures. He would tape it, his picture to them. And then he would try to sell them. <laughs> because, you know, he thought he was one of them. Although he was popular... And clean cut in high school, his appearance started to change for the worse after school. Um, we go into early adulthood. As he matured, he developed hypochondria. And if you guys don't know what hypochondria is, it's basically where... You believe that, like, something really bad's happening to you when there's nothing there. Like, let's say you just wake up one morning and you think that your heart's not beating. Well, <laughs> that was Jesse. Or Richard. Sorry. That was Richard. He often stated that his heart would stop beating or that someone stole his pulmonary artery. That's not part of hypo, you know, hypochondria. That's more like bipolar schizophrenia. Or paranoid schizophrenia. He believed holding oranges to his head would transfuse the vitamin C from the oranges to him. So people would catch him with bags of oranges on his head. He thought his skull was shifting so he would shave his head so that way he could see where his skull was shifting. His first job was answering phones for Realtors Association. Um, he kind of held that one down for a while, but he had a lot of little jobs while still using drugs. Um, in 1971, he lived with two roommates, but due to his behaviors, they moved out. As we all know, he is still on drugs at this point in time. He is still taking LSD and he, which is a hallucinant. And he uh, was still doing marijuana. So he believed, he, 
like, whenever they had company, he would walk around completely nude in front of said company. Um, and then he would lock himself in his room so that way he, they could not talk to him. This whole time in 1971 and 1972, he, his mom and dad were sending him $50 a month to help with rent. Which, back in that time, that's like sending your kid about $5,000 nowadays to help with rent. Okay. So... Halfway through 1971, the two roommates moved out because they couldn't handle his behaviors anymore. Like, he was just balls, walls. So he ended up getting two more roommates. Um, and they would get annoyed because they are in a band and he wanted to join the band like he would annoy them he wanted to uh, play conga so soon they moved out and he couldn't he, Robert couldn't handle the rent on his own so he ended up moving to his parents house in 1972 Chase's parents divorced so he would bounce in between them. Um, now, in 1972, also, he took a trip to Utah and he got arrested and believed the police gassed him. Um, so when his father bailed him out, like, they had to... His father had to convince him that he was not gassed and not to sue him because Richard, Mr. Chase here fully believed that the police gassed him and he was going to sue him. And his mom was like, yeah, no, we're not doing that. So, he went back to live with Ma in between his mom and dad's house. Um, neither parent could really stand him for too much. Like, he would go live with mom for six months. He would go live with dad for six months. And back and forth. It was just continuous back and forth. Okay. So... At this point in time, this is what he looks like. This is what Mr. Chase looks like. But, as I said, he was bouncing back and forth. Neither one of his parents really could handle him. In 1972, his mother called the police became, because he became, like, really horrible. He thought she was poisoning him, which, coincidence, his mom used to say the exact same thing about the father. He's poisoning me. Which totally sounds like paranoia. It does. You're cheating on me. You're poisoning me. I mean, it does sound like paranoia. During the argument, uh, Mr. Chase decided to grab the phone and smash it against her head. So she ended up calling 911. And at that point in time, she didn't want to press charges. So he ended up moving to live with his grandma. And she... <laughs> She was the one that really noticed his behaviors. Um, he always thought somebody was breaking in, that his blood wasn't blowing to his head, so he would be standing in the corner. Um, 
1973, chasing two doctors after not being satisfied with their answers, he went to see Dr. Ansel, who concluded that, and quote, physically he was fine. Mentally, he had a sciat site. Psychiatric, psyche, psychiatric. Basically, he was having a disturbing, disturbing mental breakdown of major priorities. In 1973, this is when a lot of the killing happening. Now, we're not going to talk, it's not killing humans. In 1973, he killed a lot of his cats because, or one of his cats, because he's seen a cat get treatment that he thought he should. So he decided to kill his cat because on TV, cats were getting better treatment than he thought he was. So, he ends up going to a mental institution in 1973 where, they, where he was diagnosed with acute paranoid schizophrenia. Um, when the mother came busting in all hot and bothered, um, she confronted the doctors and they claimed she was highly aggressive, hostile, and proactive adding she was the schizophrenic mother. So, in 1976, which if you remember, Chase was born in 1950. So, this would put Chase at 26 years old. He injected rabbit's blood into his veins. You just heard that right. He injected rabbit's blood into his veins because he was killing rabbits and injecting and drinking their blood because he thought his blood was turning into powder. He ended up with... um. blood poisoning as you would assume because I mean if you inject the wrong type of blood you're going to get massively sick well after finding after finding him his dad rushed him to the ER again he was diagnosed mentally ill so, he was admitted, well, in the mental hospital, he drank bird's blood that, like, birds would fly through the little windows, and he would drink it. And, um, he would take, like, syringes off of, like, carts and stuff. And they had therapy dogs, and he was withdrawing blood from them, and he was drinking that. Kind of, ugh. So, after being released to his mother at this point in time, again, he's released to his mother. Um, she took him off his meds. Because she didn't like the way he was on them. And then after he's off his medication. She sends him to an apartment because she can't handle him. So. He was on meds. And she took him off. Because she didn't like them. Well, he ended up going on a trip in 1977 at the age of 27 to 
Utah. And he woke up in a cornfield full of blood. Well, he was, he had the cops called on him because he's booty ass naked covered in blood. Of course, people are going to call the cops on him. And they determined that it was cow's blood. So, when he gets back to, you know, town, he's driving around in, he's just driving around town and uh, right around Christmas. And that's when he killed his first victim. His victim was a 51-year-old man. Why did he kill this man? Because he was mad that his mother wouldn't let him come over for Christmas. Yeah, y'all fucking heard that right. He was mad his mother wouldn't let him come over for Christmas. So he decided he was going to go. Nah. We're, we're, you, you can't come over. You scare me. You, mother dearest, took him off his meds that he needed. And now you're playing. You scare me. No shit, fucking Sherlock. Now, how did he get this gun? You want to say, or you want to ask? He lied about his mental health. And because he lied about his mental health, he was able to get a twenty-two handgun. And he shot his first victim with it. So, in January 1978, he tried to enter the home of a woman. But, now... We have to go into his thinking real quick, okay? His thinking was, if the door's locked, I'm not allowed in. But if the door's open, I'm allowed in. And so he tried breaking into the house, but the doors were locked. So he wasn't allowed in. So in January, on January 23... Chase ended up breaking into a woman's home. Her last name was Wallen. And he shot Wallen, who was approximately three months pregnant at the time. So he shot her the first time in the head. And the second time in the jaw, which shattered her jaw. And the third time in the head. Um, this is where it gets graphic. Now remember, he was diagnosed as impotent. Which means he cannot get it hard as a teenager. But apparently the sight of a dead body turns Mr. Chase on and he did unviolable acts to her while stabbing her in the stomach with a knife that he took from her kitchen block. Um, he then proceeded to remove her organs and her nipples and drank her blood out of a yogurt cup he found in the trash. Um... And before he left, he ended up shoving dog doo-doo down her throat, which is, uh, this man, he is horrible. And I blame his mother. I blame his mother. January 27th, he entered the home of Everly Merritt. Now, this is literally four days after he killed the woman who was pregnant. Um, when he entered the house, she had her, her friend Dan, 
her six-year-old son and the two-month old or twenty-two-month-old nephew at the house. Okay. I want to explain something about Dan before I go forward. Dan has a brain tumor that he was being treated for. He was fighting for his life. And Mr. Chase was decided that He was going to take his life. So, Dan was standing by the door. And when Chase entered, he shot and killed Dan in the head. Then he went and killed the mom. And then he went and killed the son. And then he went and killed the baby. So, like, he went in order of where they were. Um, he then decided that he was going to mutilate this poor woman. And... As he mutilated her rear end, like he was stabbing her in the rear end, and then he decided that he was going to um, enter where he mutilated her. And then he started eating her organs. So. He, as he's doing this. He get, there's a knock on the door. Because one of the friends came over. And it ended up startling him. So he grabbed the baby. The 22 month old. And fled in her car. Back to his apartment. Which is where the police found him. But they didn't find him and uh, him and the baby in time. Mr. Chase over here decapitated the baby and was eating the baby because he was hungry. So when the cops got there, there was like, a calendar. They found a calendar that said today like 44 different times and one of the days specific is the day he killed this family. Another day was the day he killed the pregnant lady. And 42 other times. But in 1979, he stood trial on six counts of murder. Now, remember, he's being tried for the lady, the pregnant lady. So, of course, the husband's in there doing the victim's statement. And the mother of Mr. Chase went to the husband of the pregnant lady and said, if your dog would have done his job, my son went to hurt your wife. Excuse me? Uh, th there's something a little fishy there, okay? <laughs> Why are we victim blaming 
why are we saying that it was the dog's fault homie this is your fault and i fully believe it's the mother's fault because he was on medication and doing good and doing therapy and she decided he didn't act right on his meds so she took him off the meds but may 8th he was found guilty six counts of first degree murder now what you guys don't know is in the prison and in the jail inmates were terrified of him like terrified of him and they countlessly acted convinced him to just end his own life because they didn't want nothing to do with him on December 26 1980 at the age of 30 he was found dead in his cell from an OD of antidepressants that he had been storing that officers did not know about but did they know about it we'll never know so let's go over this this is an interview at San Quentin okay let's go over this real quick Okay, this says, interview at San Quentin, San Rafael, California, Richard Trenton Case, Chase. Chase is presently on death row and is pregnantly not under any appeal. He was interviewed by blank and blank and advised the nature of the cap captioned program. Although Chase indicated he would be willing to submit to an interview, he declined to sign the interview consent form, and it became apparent a short time thereafter that Chase could not participate. I can't even read that road, as he could not communicate sufficiently to ascertain the necessary information to satisfy the protocol assessment form. Chase appeared to be severely mentally unbalanced and probably suffering from a psychotic condition. His behavior indicates a severe paranoid psychotic condition, probably paranoid schizophrenia. Chase is approximately 5 foot 11 but weighs only about 135 pounds. He is extremely thin and has long hair and hollow eyes and gray coloration of his skin. He has long hair and partially grown beard and his eyes appear to look through the person to whom he talked rather than at them. Although he freely talked about the six murders in which he was involved in the Sacramento area in January 1978. He had difficulty in conditioning, concentrating on any topic for any period of time, and his voice frequently trailed off, and then he would merely sit and stare until the next question was asked of him. Chase advised that he is considering an appeal because of the fact that under California li law it is justifiable homicide when a person kills to save his own life and that in the case of his murders Chase was killing to obtain the blood which was necessary to sustain his life thus justifiable homicide Chase's father stated that he was ordered to commit the murders by the death rays which were directed at him from ufos in retrospective 
Chase stated that he probably should not have committed the killings because the deteriorating condition of his stomach and blood supply might have been cured if he prayed harder to the UFOs. He also offered a as a justification for the murders, the fact that there had been many aircraft accidents in the past years, which further were caused by UFOs. He clutched an envelope in his hand during this interview, which was addressed to the President of the United States, Washington, D.C., he advised he would like to be transferred to a hospital on the East Coast so that he could be closer to the government and further from the UFOs. He stated that he is now being poisoned by prison authorities and that he has been poisoned since the first year on Earth by his mother and various mafia figures. Chase advised that he had cut the bodies of two of his female victims and had removed the blood and intestines from the women and carried them from the crime scene with an open pail. He stated drinking the blood helped him temporarily but not was not a cure to his condition. He also stated in the past years that he has unalived many dogs, cats, and other neighborhood animals from for their blood and that he, w he was rejected from his home by his parents because he unalived the family dog for his blood. Chase stated that he had been involved in drugs as a teenager but did not attribute his behavior to drugs. Chase displayed numerous writings that he had prepared to explain his case, all of which heavily centered on the involvement of UFOs, CIA, Mafia, airline disasters, unexplained unalivers, etc., which he felt imp impacted his life. The writings were very typical of a paranoid, psychotic personality. Um, so, if you go to the Violent Crime Training Assistance and investigating support role of the Bureau Psychological Profile. Yeah, you, it's long. A review of this file is being conducted pursuant to materials returned by blank by way of letter dated 2492 in order to determine if the items identified as previously missing have been returned. Um, uh, reflects the following one. Caption file was established at the NCAV on 328. Examination of the contents of this file indicated the following documents are contained therein. Number three, one assessment protocol reflecting research interview instruments concerning Richard Chase as filed out by SA FBI Academy during an interview with Chase on 8 1979 at San Quentin Penitentiary. 
B, no other documents or dates not already listed within the above assessment protocol is contained within this file, as there is no I indication within the file that any FBI field office contributed to this case. Upon review of the available documents listed above as contained within the file, the following items appear to be absent interview consent form, other research materials such as crime scene and autopsy photos, police and presentence reports, medical and physical evaluations, etc. So apparently there's a lot of shit missing. Um, I can't read that. That's too little. But it says June 9th, 1979, San Quentin Richard T. Chase. To the Congress, as I think that's supposed to be of the United States Appeal for Federal Court, Federal Appeals Court on the matters involving. I can't read that. I have recently been sentenced to death in California with option for appeal to the state and federal authority to review my case. The major point points of appeal ultimately deal with the existence of a UFO death ray used as a weapon and its relation to me. The facts and considerations involved in the trial were many and matter was complicated in the involvement of police control because of their secret of the UFO and its power to run a minute to minute report on a complex complicated machine that could be controlled by threats to people involved in its entire entries similarly to a computer control of humans simply by motioning to kill or threat threat me as the defendant in the case i would it would be possible to explain this in a table outline that would open another case of unaliving and conspiracy of a numerous proper Propertations. Um, I was born in 1950. I was Jewish. My birth was signified by a birthmark that was noted as the a star of David on my forehead. News spread, I believe, the first reports were made by my doctor. Several underground forces thought it could be a sign of UFO cloning experiments. Having concluded this, an underground in Sacramento... He was unalived in an airport or a airplane wreck. Uh, <sighs> pew pewed down by this underground. There is a report on wreckage, but I have not been able to make the county investigator or public defender raise this as an issue in my defense. There is loads of suppressed evidence that an underground existence and documentary evidence along pro proves that I have political pressure from Sacramento that make it impossible for me to get anything 
but a political development in the courtroom, including tremendous pressure from the news media, live movie televisions, from the courtroom, from a Channel 13 Sacramento. Holy shit. So this is the appeal that Mr. Chase was going after. This is fucking crazy. Let's continue. Developments of the case itself begins in or about 1953. It was at about this time I began to take notice of physical impairment and saw a psychiatrist about it. I had no knowledge at this time that since the death of my doctor in 1951, my mother had been prompted to poison me. Pressure from faciest I can't read that because it's cut off. Uh, was evolved cannibalism was one of their goals and there is evidence in Sacramento that could be found as bones of missing person I first began discovering the fact about Sacramento in about 1975 Furthermore, complicating matters was my discovery of UFO intelligence observing my activities approximately six to seven months before I unalived six people in Sacramento. The recent rash of airplane accidents and disasters can be if Study concluded as related to my situation by several reasons. One, a neighbor since 1962 blank six or seven months before gave me a picture of a flying saucer that I have been interested in since he told me about them in 1962. Number two, the recent crush of Thousands of small airplanes in the USA. Number three, occurring at the same time as important decisions. I'm going to say it's decisions. In my case, both decided against me because of political pressure and knowledge of the UFO involvement through unadmitted can be provided by investigations of officers reported to me to have made a million dollars each in making threats in trying this case. Including paying off all involved on the jury and can be proved if investigated by FBI and a federal court. Venue order number nine, November 1978, crash PSA from Sacramento to San Diego. B, judgment June 1979, crash DC 8, Los Angeles to Chicago. The f defense I was given against the killing of the six persons I think he means people. And Sacramento was originated by the public defender that seemed to know my background and introduced himself as a friend of the family who and had been chosen for me. So they're all crazy. Got it. I told them the story as I remembered it, beginning with the first hospitalization for heart attacks in 1972. This was brought on by a head injury I reci received in a fight with some Italians that had been close friends up until the time I found out that I was Jewish about 
21 years old. After that incident, I noticed a weakened condition in my heart and head. I borrowed several books and studied the circulation in the textbooks. It was the first time that I learned the directional flow of blood through the body. Somebody do not give this man books. The Italians were never made to come to court to testify that there had been a fight and to how many times I had been hit in the head. But is that, did that actually happen? That's what I want to know. Did that actually happen? <clears throat> I instead insisted they knew and were involved in the conspiracy against me, yet he would not subpoena them. Maybe because they couldn't find him. Maybe because there wasn't anything there. In 1975, I received Social Security for disablement. So he was on SSI because of the simple fact that he's crazy. I heard a lot about fascists that had killed people right in the area that I lived uh, Cannon Street in North Sacramento they hid the bodies in the sewer a lot thousands since I was a kid I was sick and propaganda on television gave me the idea that these local personalities had committed many of the crimes they talked on television, giving me the idea that unaliving was legal in Sacramento. These included... Okay, so this homie can literally pick up a book, learn the circulation system in his body, but he can't pick up a book and learn that unaliving is illegal. Okay, got it. These included lists that had been found in my apartment in a yellow notebook. Um, I'm not reading the names. From Channel 13. And other show business locals that belonged to the group that had originally discovered me. It says me, me. And controlled the situation of my my being controlled this then was the same time that they had they may have been expecting me to get an idea to kill an a animal because they knew I had been poisoned was desperate and was suffering from shock a year okay so it says later but they crossed it out and put before after seeing blank in May 1977, a lot of this has to be, re like the names have to be redacted. And discovering the UFOs on the drive back from Colorado, which landed on several occasions and did not lose contact. Even in Sacramento, they kept bright lights in the sky. I noticed them and believed that their intent Elaine, oh, intelligence, was high so they could not help me by landing and giving me first aid equipment. Okay. In May 1976, I unalived a rabbit at the Cano Street residence and drank the blood just as I had suspected I was being followed and watched by the underground, including the first defendant signs in 1973 when an Italian sheriff moved in across the street. And then in 1974, uh, Folsom prison guard moved in next door. Suspicious Mafia? Now I have proof positive because the rabbit had been poisoned and I was admitted to 
Community Hospital in North Sacramento. Okay, so in 1976 uh, was when he got poisoned. Holy wow. Reading, reading this from his side is completely different. Okay, I was admitted to the community hospital. I asked for a transfusion, but they would only treat me for poison. Septic shock after a few days, a Dr. Blank arrived and demanded that I come with him to ARC hospital. He was a psychiatrist, okay? He called for a judge and my parents and had a trial at the hospital. Found me insane from paranoid schizophrenia and I was not allowed to leave the hospital. I asked for another doctor after several months because the drugs were knocking me out. After several months later, Blank said he could help me to get out of the hospital and on social security that had been authorized for me by blank in April 1976. Because of this, I was released, but had so much trouble outside the normal range of local people in the form of racism against me. Homie was a white dude. What racism did he have? Oh, that's right. He thinks he's an alien. I then left Sacramento by bus, which led me to discover the discovery of UFOs, which match blank pictures. Picture he had given me only days before I left. There is evidence that I was well known and followed by the Sacramento Society that had developed, and when they found out how to control the UFOs by threatening me, they sent forth to construct a plan to capture me for crimes related to the ones that I had committed afraid that I or my people may discover how to use UFO power to arrest them and find the remains of the bodies they have hidden over the past 20 years in sewers of the local community. This would be Miss missing persons of similarity to myself okay it continues i'm sorry this is very long but this is actually really fascinating facts brought out in the first court who were so suppressed it left a feeling that my story was imaginary and the jury's decision did not conclude that my story was true if they would not give me a second degree decision. All the public defender alum for witness for the defense were psychiatrists who had found me insane and doctors who had found me physically disabled. Then the penalty death was judgment. There is no way I could accumulate documentary evidence or witnesses through their public defender's office. Dude, if there was witnesses, there would have been witnesses. If I can have amnesty to the interior, interior United States, I could prove that form Sacro County in Palo Alto by threatening me they used the UFO machine to shoot down thousands of airplanes as a threat to government. For instance, my d dad is federally employed as a computer programmer known all the facts in the case but has not been able to help me in any way because of the control so your daddy worked for the government ah the federal government this could be valued information under your control i could take sacramento to court 
for treason. Federal aviation may be interested in the case of plane disasters. Recent extensive news coverage in the USA. They are given. So he's asking for like. Okay, so he's asking to be, like, his case to be restudied at this time. Appealed, basically. And this whole entire time, he's, like, blaming UFOs, blaming being poisoned, blaming the mafia. Like, if you're... Oh, wow. Wow. Okay, let's continue. To the federal government, this could be valuable. Okay, I already read that one. They are giving me a chance for the prison here at San Quentin in Mill Valley to write letters and have visits with anyone that could help me build the case against the death penalty because of misunderstanding. Mis con- Truing information and suppressing documentary evidence and important testimony. That says testimony, not testimony. Furthermore, <laughs> sheriffs at Palo Alto made millions. Each of their job officers, Blank and Sergeant Blank, and Lieutenant Blank, all of which can be investigated, and it would be suggested that they have hidden the money in case of this possibility because I do have a large underground that is aware of all the statements I have made, both pro and con, on the issue of the police bribes in large quantities against me and the UFOs and its powers to destroy by means of even earthquakes or blizzards and especially airplanes seem to affect the case and practically noted first of a helicopter crash in Chicago in 1977 and a hundred other that I have read about the world over. So, dude saying, let's get this correct here. Dude is saying that because the planes are crashing, it is evidence that the UFOs are trying to kill him. Holy shit. All right, let's continue reading. Because this is awesome. At this time, I had been sick again from a similar poisoning and went to Dr. Blank's office for medical reasons. He was upset about something and did not want to help me further. I knew it was the UFOs, but did not know how or, or why they were shooting down planes. They were Nazis. So UFO... Okay. Um, Homie definitely needs help. And they knew I would unalive someone if there were... Son, that I could get no medical help. And thought I had the power against them from a UFO ship. The Sheriff's Department in Sacramento is behind the control of the arrest before the killing of the unalivings actually occurred. There is evidence confiscated from my apartment which can be identified as conclusive of this. I think he's trying to say before it can be found. But it says BF or DF? IF? Yeah, IF. If it can be found and has not been defiled by the DM. This 
is reason to believe they have made millions. Also, they must be investigated. They have found it is possible to discourage people trying to help me with the UFO death race. I'm sure I need to see federal government agents so that this racket fall into legal hands before I am systematically executed or held for life by bribes from them. The DA referred, offered Okay, the DA did something more than one to a UFO death ray. And even threatened one of my doctors if he did not restate his presumptions that I was insane. Another one of my doctors who had stated that I was under the law, not aware of right from wrong because of a psychological damage from what he apparently knew was true by introspection only. The same attitude was given to all the psychiatric and physical diagnosis. There was a part of great doubt to my character because I had practice cannibalism as I knew they had done to a woman of my race in Sacramento. What? Dude, you are white. What the hell? The officers who first controlled me at Sacto and made the first million dollars from the Nazi underground in Sacro were blank and such a blank. I could go into more details and explanations if you will please send me the necessary officials and documents so that I may be moved to a federal controlled situation and prove that all facts and statements contained here are true. A trial without the Sacramento following gathered at the trial who are the cause of the problem involved, especially Sankara Media, a federal court is suggested because of their coverage. It is abnormally unnecessary and phony from the stance of their being a family dedicated and directly related by media to the all right so basically okay so this man right here right here appealed his case court and the whole entire appeal is about how the mafia ufos and government made millions to put him in jail and how like his whole entire appeal was about uh, this whole conspiracy going on and UFOs um he needed help he did he definitely needed help. And he needed to be in an institution. And kept away from people. What he didn't need is his mother, who also suffered from schizophrenia. But I hope you guys like this. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And I hope you have a great day. Love you all. Bye!